This isn't about, look how great we are. This is about setting the bar as role models and inspiring and pushing the limits of the next generation. Every piece of training, every obstacle we went through, got us to this moment. So I'm the youngest in my family. My dad is my instructor, and I have two older siblings that also do martial arts. So they were all in martial arts when I came into this world. So we all joke about how I was kicking before I was walking. Um, but I officially started martial arts. Like, I had my first class in the club when I was four. When I started, we started competing right away. Um, wasn't very good. You should see my first competition video. I went to do my first form, and it was like, looking at it now, it doesn't even look like what it was supposed to be. <laughs> but we did it anyways, it was really cute. And then um, we kept doing competitions almost every weekend. I had one day in my entire martial arts career where I didn't want to go. And I remember it vividly. And after that, it was just, it was Kung Fu time, it was time to train. I trained after school, and then we would go train in the club for class, and then we would come back home, we would train some more, and then we'd go to sleep. And of course, we would have homework in the middle of that. I don't know where we put that, but it, it happened. We did well in school, but it was a lot. We did it because we loved it, and it was a whole family thing. And so I always looked up to my older sister. She basically paved the way for like female martial artists at that time. Like if you look at old videos from competitions that we have, like she's like the only female in all of these. She was and is absolutely amazing and inspiring. So looking up to that was like intimidating, but also really cool. I met her when I was seven. My brother had started martial arts and I watched from the sidelines and <laughs> watched him progress. And I thought it was such a cool sport. I started stretching on the sidelines and doing my splits on the sidelines while they were stretching in classes. She would just be like stretching in the side. I'm like, oh, that's a, like a cute little show off on the side there, wanting to get noticed. She's like, I'm here and I could do this stuff too. So basically like a little like firecracker. So when she started competitions, I was like, yes. All right, we could, we could cultivate this. We could make this work. Moving into my black belt divisions, those were a lot different than my advanced divisions. And that was definitely a big change. So moving into those black belt divisions where the competitions were harder and stronger, I doubted myself a bit. But I pushed through that self-doubt. And then when Tifu Sylvana asked me about the record, that shot up my self-confidence. So ever since I broke my first Guinness World Record, um, I'm always on this site, just like looking for new records or seeing what other ones that I could break. And I kind of like came across this one was like, oh, this would be like a really good opportunity for, for two kickers to do this. And then I was like, wait, I could do this with one of my students and decided to reach out to Hannah um, to be my partner in this around that time with the intention of starting training early 2020. So that was a really exciting start. We're like, okay, we got, a, we got a goal, we're gonna work towards it and all this stuff. And then all of a sudden, we shut down. On how the coronavirus. I'm ordering the mandatory closure. The virtual lockdown. New announcements overnight of events being postponed or canceled. And young athletes robbed of their chances to shine. It was tough. But again, you push through, you pivot, and you learn, right? We, we learn that, okay, we can still see each other through Zoom. And me as a coach, I was like, okay, now I got to get this. I got to make this work. Like Hannah's counting on me to guide her. So we made it work. Yeah, breathe. Snap it. But we're like, when is this even going to happen? And we're starting to get a little bit antsy, I guess, or like starting to be like, is this even going to happen ever? And starting to feel a little down. 
But then we just kind of like picked it back up. And we're like, okay, it will happen. So we're, I think we're back in that like, okay, let's start training again. Let's start figuring this out. So the moment that we reopen, we could do this. So it was a lot of training like by myself and having to keep that motivation up to get this record and making sure that because we had to rely on each other for this, right? So making sure each other were training, keeping each other in check, right? So that was definitely something that I would say was one of our biggest roadblocks. Um, and then injuries. I broke my foot in September. That was definitely something I couldn't quite train through. I did my best to, but it was definitely something that put a pause on the training. When I found out how she broke her foot, I rolled my eyes. I was walking in two directions at once and tripped over myself and heard a pop, and then that was that. <laughs> I was like, how can this happen? She does like the craziest stuff. She literally flips through the air. She does like the hardest kicks that you could even imagine. And then she like trips on literally nothing and breaks her foot. It was like, I, I just was in disbelief. <laughs> I was like, only Hannah would have this happen. I felt like I let um, Tifa Sylvana down because I, I put a pause on it and I had to be pushed back. I felt bad for her because I knew that like she was going to be hard on herself for it. So that was that was tough. Um, and then we and then I had to like learn how to pivot again as like a coach because I had to think of other ways where she could keep training and keep her endurance and keep working towards her goals. So then I had to kind of figure that plan out, which was tough. But I just kind of felt like what I said, like I felt bad because I knew how hard she would be on herself. From a logistics standpoint, when there's a tournament coming up, it's that day and you know it's that day. And no matter what, you can't extend it. You can't move it. You can't make up excuses for extending it past a certain point. But when it comes to you breaking a Guinness World Record, it's whenever you want to do it. So you have to, you have to say your own date and you have to hold yourself accountable for that date. And there were many times where we were like, okay, maybe one more month. And then one month turns into two months and then two months turns into, okay, we can't even do it because of COVID. So it's just wishy-washy in that sense where you, like I said, you have to hold yourself accountable. And if you don't, then it could be forever. So leading up to it, Han and I continued to practice a little bit here and there. We didn't want to come across any random injuries that we know Hannah might encounter. But we were still training to get our pace right. Um, it just like clicked all of a sudden that we were like, oh, okay, this is the pace we have to go through. We kind of took advantage of that and we did it a lot. Kept like rehearsing or practicing that that timing to make sure that we have it on point and then we rested and then it was game day. So the beginning of that day was like kind of R&R. &R. We wanted to relax, we got our makeup done and wanted to just feel nice before all of the chaos and before all of the like crazy anxiety hit. I was definitely nervous before the record actually happened uh, I feel like that was a very similar feeling to right before I fight. I basically told Hannah right before, I was like, put your headphones on and don't talk to anyone. There was a lot going in my head at that moment. The nerves um, really set in right before the attempt happened. Um, so I really tuned everything out. Like we were walking and we did not look at anybody. We face like face down just trying to prepare ourselves for what was about to happen stretching for crazy amounts of time like we did not have to stretch for that long but we did and warmed up got all the nerves out and then um got onto the stage three two one if i kick too fast those kicks won't count. If she slows down, 
We might not reach the number in time. We need to stay on pace and keep alternating. You can see our faces light up as soon as we knew we broke it. So much relief when I heard Julian count past the number that we had to hit, and then we bursted at the end, last 10 seconds, was like a crazy amount of kicks. I don't remember it. after it at all. I just remember being happy and then a bunch of people coming to me and like congratulating both of us. And I finally was able to like go talk to people because I didn't talk to people for like, I don't know, maybe an hour prior to it. It was an amazing feeling to like bring someone up to my level. It's like, what you want in a coach, right? Like, we tell our students all the time, like, I'm training you to be better than me. Like, I, I will be successful if you end up better than me. Because then I bring them up, and I know I have to hold myself accountable to continue to be higher. And so I am raising my standard while raising theirs. So the fact that I was able to bring someone up to that, it's like success on a coach level which is why this record is so different from my previous one. Because my previous one was all me as a student, right? My dad was coaching me. My brother was helping me with personal training. But ultimately, it was my ability, you know? And now, now it's me as a coach. And I've raised the student to also be there. It was cool. It's a great feeling. I honestly am so happy that we have another of our student, okay, that we could help, they could break a record, that make an example, okay, to other, so many other teenagers, so many other kids. And my kids, they become that kind of example. I leave it up to them now. They create another, another martial artist in their way to help them to be just like them. Other people might think it's really cool, other people might not care as much, um, but I'm proud of myself for accomplishing it, and that's what really matters. Um, and I know that some people think it's cool, and some people think, oh, okay. But um, it's always been about what I thought. I just want to keep raising the next generation to be better. Well, it's not a one-year process, you know? It's training someone for like X amount of years and just knowing that they have the ability to do this. And then refining that to the technique that the record needs. So it's not about, okay, I have to teach this one thing for a year in hopes that they'll get it. It's like, no, I've taught this person how to kick since they were seven. Kicking is not the issue. It's just trying to get the actual coordination aspect of it. So training for the record started when she was seven. So the takeaway that I want people to, to have from this accomplishment is that you could push through barriers and train through them. And no matter how hard it might, might seem at that moment, getting through it is the best feeling in the world. 
And I just want to share that experience and that feeling in hopes of reaching someone who's maybe struggling with whatever it may be. It doesn't have to be athletic. It could be in any aspect of their life. Try and find a way to push through it and accomplish it because you won't regret that feeling. Do you remember what you told them on that day? Uh, if I remember anything, I said you could do it. And again, it's a time you have to, that particular time, uh, you have to give them the full confidence to your students, okay? To tell them that you had, we had seen them, I had seen them practice, I had seen them way passing the limit of what they have to break. So why will I, why will I have to stand in there and ask them, oh, okay, well, you know what, you're gonna have to try hard. They already did, they already made their goal. It's we only have time now to talk and make them confident that just go out there and do it because I know you will. Just try doing it, have fun with it, and they did.